All right, so the volume of a cylinder, which is what 90% of these questions are asking you to find, is V is equal to what? What's my formula? Can someone help me out here? Exactly, pi r squared h. Now, if we're going to find the volume of a cone, it's that same exact formula, just divided by 3, right? So we're going to square our radius, we're going to multiply it by pi, and we're going to multiply it by the height. What's my radius here in number 1? My radius is 2. What's my height? 8. So we're going to set up the equation v is equal to pi times 2 squared times 8. So we'll go pi times 2 squared times 8. That gives us 100.53. How many decimals do we want in our answer in this question, though? One? Two decimals. Oh, where'd it go? Two decimals. Nearest hundredth means we want two decimal places. So we'll cut this off after 5, 3. We get 100.53 cubic inches, or inches cubed, right? Any questions about how we went about solving that? Good, we're just plugging into the calculator, right? Number two, same thing, my R is four, my H is 10. To find the volume, we'll do pi times 4 squared times 10. Pi times 4 squared times 10 gives us 502.65. 5, oops, 502.65 feet cubed. Sorry, I'll move it up. There we go. 502.65 feet cubed. Number three, we've got a cone. So like I said, we're going to do the same exact formula, pi r squared h, but we're going to divide the whole thing by three, because if you remember from that video, we saw that the volume of three cones fits into one cylinder of the same size. What's my radius for this cone? Six, what's my height? Eight. eight, right? So we'll do pi times six squared times eight divided by three. Pi times six squared times eight. That gives us 904.77. We divide that by three, and we get 301.59. 301.59. Cubic inches or inches cubed, however you want to say it. There's my calculator so you can see. I'm going to switch these lights real quick. Hold on. That made it worse. Well, now that I. There, now it's. Well. Whatever. That's fine. It looks a little better from my perspective. Question so far. Plug it in, solving it out. Get the number, cutting off after two decimals, right? Number four, we're back to a cylinder. We're going to do pi times 7 squared times 12. Pi times 7 squared times 12 gives us a large number, 1847.26. 1,847. Two six. What happened? What did I do? There. Centimeters cubed. Yeah. Why does it say round to the nearest hundred in the question? In the question? Good. So what round to the nearest hundred means is that we just want two decimals. So if we if we do 49 times 12 times pi, we get this number, right? We don't want to write every single digit of our decimal. We want to cut it off after 2, right? So we've got 0.25, but we also have to look at the third decimal. If that third decimal is 5 or more, 
we have to take that second point, our hundredth place, and bump it up. That's how we got 0.26, right? 0.256 rounds up to 0.26. You see what I mean? Great question. Thank you for that, Dylan. Down to five. Now, what's my radius here? Is it five? No. No, what's my radius here? 2.5. That five stretches across the entire cylinder. Whoa. So five is our diameter. To find the radius, we gotta cut that in half. That's where we get 2.5 with a height of nine. Pi times 2.5 squared times nine gives us pi times 2.5 squared times nine. One seventy six point seven one. One seventy six point seven one inches cubed. Questions I could answer on the left side here. Good. Moving up to six, we got a cone. We're going to have to divide this by three again. So we're going to do pi times three squared times five over three. That gives us our volume, right? Pi times nine times five divided by three, 47.12. Hang on. How's it going? Good. 47.12. 47.12. Now something I want to point out real quick is yesterday all of our answers asked for us to round our answer to the nearest tenth, right? If it asks you to round to the nearest tenth, how many decimal places do you want in your answer? Just one. But to the nearest hundredth means you need two, right? Two decimal spaces. The way that we can remember that is hundredth, right? If we have a hundred, there's two zeros. But if we're rounding to the tenth, 10 only has one zero. So whenever you see hundredth, you need two decimal points. Whenever you're rounding to the tenth, you need one decimal point. Does that make a little sense? Cool. Number seven, we got another cone. This is all kind of repetitive, right? Uh, we got 32 pi divided by three, 33.51. We're just checking our work here at this point because it's the same process over and over. Number eight makes our lives a little bit trickier by giving us that weird diameter. And now this lighting is not good at all. A right cylindrical container can hold 290 cubic inches of water when full. What does 290 represent? Is that our radius, our height, our volume? What is that? Volume. volume, right? The volume is 290. If the base has a diameter of six and a half inches, what is the height? So we're using the same formula, but we're solving it in kind of a different way, right? Because if V is equal to pi r squared h, we know that V is 290. We know that my r is what? If my diameter is six and a half, what's my radius? Three point two five, three and a quarter, right? Half of six is three, and half of one half is one fourth. Three point two five squared times the the height, which we don't know what it is. That's h. So let's solve this side of the equation. 3.25 times 3.25 times pi gives us 33.18 h is equal to 290. We just plug that in the calculator, got our decimal answer. 33.18 h is equal to 290. So how can we get h all by itself? Divide both sides by. 33.18. That's going to cancel those two numbers out in front of our H, giving H some room to breathe all by itself. And 290 divided by our answer there is 8.74. What are my units on 8.74? Inches. 
That's right, just inches, not inches cubed. Right? The volume is in cubic inches, but the height itself is just in inches. Great catch. So a little bit of backwards work there on number eight, but thanks to our solving equations unit, we should be good to go on that process. Yes? If not, let me know. Now let's do some word problems. Our favorite thing, number nine. A store sells cylindrical containers of oatmeal in two sizes, small and large. The small container has a height of 4.6 and a diameter of 5. The large container has a height of 8 and a diameter of 6. So let me draw those two containers real quick. There's my small cylinder. There's my large cylinder of oatmeal. Pretty poorly drawn, but... I'm not an artist. So my small cylinder has a height of 4.6. My large cylinder has a height of 8. What's the small cylinder's radius? Oops. If the diameter is 5, what's the radius, folks? 2.5, right? We've got to divide the diameter by 2 to give us the radius. If the large container has a diameter of six, what's my radius? Three, Three right? So the question that they're being uh, that we're at, uh, sorry, the question that we are being asked is how many times as great is the volume of the large container compared to the volume of the small container? So is the large container two times as large? Is it three times as large? We don't know. To figure that out, we have to find each volume, set up a proportion or a fraction and simplify. So let's do that. The volume of my small cylinder is going to be 2.5 squared times pi times 4.6. That gives us 90.3. 90.3 for the volume. My large cylinder, we're going to do, let me move this over. Large cylinder will do 3 squared times 8 times pi. That gives us 226.2. 226.2. Everyone see how I got those two volumes? So now we just need to do the large volume over the smaller volume and see what we get. 226.2 divided by 90.3 gives us about 2.5, 2.5. So how many times as great is the volume of a large container? Well, it's 2.5 times as large. Two and a half times the size of that smaller container based on the volume, the amount of oatmeal each container can hold. Right, so however, how, however much oatmeal you have in the small container, the large container can hold two and a half times that amount. Victor? Uh, you go up a little bit. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Number 10, let's see what number 10 is asking. That's a lot of words there. A cylinder holds three stacked tennis balls. The tennis balls are spheres. The balls touch the inside edges, top and bottom of the cylinder. The diameter of each tennis ball is 2.8 inches. Enter the volume in cubic inches of the cylinder, rounding to the nearest tenth this time, not hundredth. We've got to make sure we point that out. And then we've got to enter the volume of the empty space inside the cylinder. Hmm, this one sounds difficult. Let's break this one down. Let me try my best to draw what's happening here. So we've got a cylinder. Here's my cylinder. Dot, 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 dot. There's my cylinder. And it says there's three stacked tennis balls on the inside of this cylinder. 
So, and all the tennis balls obviously are spheres. There's one of our spheres. There's probably do, should do a different color. There's our second sphere. And there's our, those are really, really ugly spheres, but you guys know what I mean. So that's our situation. We got three spheres stacked up inside of a cylinder. Let's see, what numbers do we know? The diameter of each tennis ball is 2.8. That means my radius is going to be what? Well, what's half of 2.8? 1.4. And that's my radius for all of them, 1.4. Even the radius of my cylinder is 1.4 they're all the same size. Okay. Enter the volume in cubic inches of the cylinder in the first response box. Um, I feel like we're missing something here, aren't we? The height. We're missing the height. Hmm. Let's think about how we might be able to find the height of this cylinder. Anyone uh, with this horribly drawn image here. Does anyone see where we might be able to get the height of this cylinder? Azalea? Uh, the Say that one more time. The three, spheres. the three spheres. What about the three spheres? They're like stacked on top of each other. They're stacked on top of each other. Here's what we tend to forget, right? We see the radius represented like this, but spheres are three-dimensional. So we can draw any type of radius we want. We could draw a radius going straight up the sphere and another radius going straight down the sphere, right? So there's 1.4 and 1.4. This sphere also has 1.4 and 1.4, and so does this third one. Does everyone kind of see what I did there? So there's one, two, three, four, five, Six spheres radiuses, radii is the plural. Six times 1.4 gives us a height of 8.4. So the total height of this cylinder is 8.4. It's kind of hard to visualize. Hopefully this drawing at least is somewhat understandable. Uh, but that's how we can find the height. That's the trickiest part of this problem is figuring out what our height is supposed to be. But now that we have a height, h is equal to 8.4 r is equal to 1.4. Let's find the volume of the cylinder doing pi r squared times h. 1.4 times 1.4 times 8.4 times pi gives us 51.72. Was it inches cubed? Yeah, inches cubed. So that's the volume of the entire cylinder. Right, that's the first thing we're gonna enter is 51 point, nearest tenth, 51.7 inches cubed. We're gonna cut it off after one. Now we have to find the volume of the empty space. What does that mean? Well, the empty space is all of this in between where the round edges of our sphere don't get to interact with our cylinder at all, right? All those blue shaded in regions. How can we find the area of that? We don't have the, the formula for the area of those weirdly shaped things. Theo, what can we do? Use the height of it from the three spheres. Use the height from the three spheres, good. And then use the radius from the spheres. Good, exactly. So you're saying we're going to find the volume of the spheres? No, the volume of the cylinder. Oh, perfect. We have the volume of the cylinder right here, 51.72, right? So let's think about it, right? If we have the volume of this whole thing, and we have the volume, or we can find the volume, of each of these spheres inside the cylinder. Can't we do the volume of the cylinder minus three times the volume of one sphere to give us the volume of the empty space? Does everyone, or does anyone uh, kind of see what I mean by that? Yeah. If we take the entire cylinder volume and subtract this volume, this volume, and this volume, well, that'll give us all this empty space in between. So let's go ahead and find the volume of one of these spheres. The volume of a sphere is four pi r cubed over three. 
4 pi 1.4 cubed over 3. That's going to be a mess to plug in, but let's do it. 4 times pi times 1.4 to the third power divided by 3 gives us 11.49 inches cubed. So that's the volume of one sphere. So if we're using this formula, 51.7 minus 3 times 11.5 equals what we want to find, the volume of our empty space. 51.7 minus 3 times 11.5 gives us 17.2 inches cubed. That is our secondary answer to this question, 17.2. Yeah. 17.2 inches cubed. That one was kind of a, obviously a challenging one. There's a lot of information that went into that. So hopefully you were able to kind of get an overview of what we did there so that you're at least somewhat prepared when we get to it next week. Essentially what this problem is talking about is like, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Like, uh, here we go. That's exactly what we're talking about. Anyone ever seen like a tennis ball thing at a store? Yeah, it's a cylinder, more or less, with three spheres stacked inside of it. So all that empty air space in there, that's the final volume that we found, was the, the, the volume of that empty air inside the tennis, uh, tennis ball container thing. Anyway, anyone in here play tennis? No? I do. Cool. That's okay. 